Next, we have Miss Chelsea Stewart, a second year law student, and she will be speaking on the topic of should the state be required to provide free tertiary education? Let's listen in. Good morning to the judges, the Honorable Justice Ronnie Moody Singh, Professor Rosemary Bell Antoine, Dean of the Faculty of Law, University of the West Indies, Principal of the Hewitting Law School, Mrs. Miriam Samaru, and to you, my friends and colleagues. In the year 1967, the mighty sparrow sang, children go to school and learn well, otherwise later on in life you will catch real hell. In the year 1997, Gypsy sang, little black boy, go to school and learn, little black boy show some concern. United Nations and UNESCO laid down international legal obligations for the rights to education, realizing that the right to education and education for all were both political and legal obligations. For decades, there seems to be the common theme here, education being of paramount importance. But the question remains, should it be mandatory for governments to provide free education? And should this provision extend to tertiary education? Yes, it should. This morning, I will briefly discuss three pertinent points. The economic sustainability of this provincial provision, the human sustainability of this provision, and of course, the human rights perspective in the scheme of this issue. Free tertiary education means education beyond the secondary level, free of charge for any person desirous of this. What does this mean for the economy? It means that in the most extreme circumstances, the state, meaning the government of Trinidad and Tobago, can be required to spend billions of dollars given the current demographic of persons capable of obtaining tertiary education. It is wise to examine the balancing effects of this. Where funds are nucleated in one area, then there's opportunity costs for higher taxes or less spending in some other area. However, the human sustainability point may very well contradict this factor. You see, the human sustainability perspective explores the social effect of free tertiary education. It is safe to say that an educated population is an elevated population. An elevated population diminishes the probability of poverty. A decreased rate of poverty a decreased rate of poverty diminishes the level of state responsibility, state dependency, sorry. And of course, where there's decreased dependency, there's less strain on state resources. Therefore, it can appear from this perspective that a long-term effect of free tertiary education is that it can act as a financial benefit to the state. We can therefore look at it as an investment. Article 1 of the United Nations Declaration of Human Rights says, all human beings are born free and equal in dignity and rights. One of those rights being the rights to education. Protocol 1, Article 2 states that no person shall be denied the right to an education. Equality and Human Rights Commission states that every person has a right to an effective education. None of these sources specify the type of education. Therefore, free education should not be confined to primary and secondary levels. Despite this, critics of tertiary education may say that the quality of education may suffer if university education were free. They may say that full governmental funding may be the kiss of death for university education. And it is fair and reasonable to say that only primary and secondary education should be free since it is needed for basic functioning in society. However, is it good enough that a person is denied the opportunity to obtain education beyond a certain level because his pocket will not allow it? No, it is not. Because the basic understanding of a human right is that so long that we are human, we should all have fair conditions that fully utilize our talents and potentials. We should all have incomes that accord with the efforts expended in our labor. We should all have the opportunity to enhance our human well-being and development. Keyword, all. From the homeless adult on the street, to the child in your orphanage, to you sitting here in your suits, your pants suits and your skirt suits, what do we all have in common? We are all human. And that is what human rights recognizes, the humanity in each and every one of us. Therefore, 
When it comes to human rights, education being one of them, we should at least be all given the same bare opportunities. So that later on in life, in the words of Sparrow, we will not catch real hell. Judges, colleagues, and friends, thank you for taking the time to listen to me. Thank you and good morning.